You may have heard earlier this year that Ford, then GM, Rivian, and a whole host of other automakers announced that beginning in the first half of 2024, their vehicles will be able to charge on Tesla's supercharger network. Access will first be provided by adapters, then at some point in 2025, the adapters won't be needed anymore because these car makers are going to start building their cars with Tesla's charging port, now called NECS, rather than the CCS port they have now. As a refresher, in North America, there are three DC fast charge standards. There's Tesla's connector, now called NAX for North American charging standard. There's CCS, currently used by everyone else. And there's also CHAdeMO, but that's being phased out. In the future, the automakers that have announced the switch will be switching their cars from the CCS port to the NAX port on their upcoming vehicles, effectively making it the new North American charging standard which is the epitome of manifesting. These automakers working with Tesla so their cars, like my Polestar, will be able to access Tesla supercharger network is a big deal. If you've never taken a road trip in an EV, or you have, but it was in a Tesla, you might think, why does this matter? Well, I could tell you, but instead I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take a road trip some 400 miles from here in St. Louis, Missouri, down to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'll do the trip once in my Polestar 2, stopping only at CCS chargers, because that's all I can use. Then I'll do that same trip again in this standard range Tesla Model 3 I've rented from Hertz, stopping only at Tesla Superchargers. With both cars, I'm gonna stop to charge far more times than necessary because the goal of this is to show you as many chargers as possible. My Polestar 2 can charge at a peak rate of 150 kilowatts, and this standard range Model 3 can charge at a peak of 170 kilowatts. With both cars, I'll use on-route battery preconditioning and target an arrival state of charge of 10% so I can maximize the charging speed at every stop. Oh, and before any of you get the wrong idea about what I'm about to show you, let me reiterate that the vast majority of EV charging is done at home. This is just for trips. Anyway, let's, let's begin. begin. And I'm on my way to my first stop, 66 miles to the south on I-55 in Perryville, Missouri. According to PlugShare, these two rapid chargers are 150 kilowatts, and they're nestled between two population centers, between Cape Girardeau and the southern part of the St. Louis metro area. So it's in a good place. In the Tesla, it's raining quite a lot. And I'll be driving right by Perryville because there's no supercharger there for me. And I've got another 30 miles to go to get to my first supercharger, and the one to the north is even further away. So the rapid charger in Perryville is the only rapid charger for tens of miles. All right, I didn't quite make it here down to 10%. I only made it down to 16%, Turn right but onto Jefferson Street. you interrupted me. But it shouldn't matter, that's still in the low enough to get peak speed. And it's at a hotel. First to merit, that's a terrible place to put a rapid charger. Feet, your destination will be on the right. You interrupted me again. What are you gonna do at a hotel for 30 minutes? It's aside from that thing. There's a perfectly good gas station across the street. You could have put the chargers there. All right, first stop seems like a good one. These are two 150 kilowatt chargers right off the interstate, and they're from Francis Energy, which you probably haven't heard of unless you're from Oklahoma. If being at a hotel wasn't bad enough, these are also really hard to activate. There's no credit card reader on them, first of all. There is a symbol for the tap to pay, but it doesn't accept credit cards, so I don't really know what that is. You have to have the Francis Energy app to activate these chargers, and the app does not work on any other charging network. I've got it here says right in the app 150 kilowatts i know that's a lie because this is a 200 amp cable okay i should explain that power in watts is just volts times amps one kilowatt is just a thousand watts my polestar's battery has a voltage of about 400 volts because of that cable's limitation of 200 amps i can only get 200 times 400 80 kilowatts out of that charger in order to actually get 150 kilowatts out of that charger with its 200 amp limitation my car's battery would have to have a voltage of at least 750 volts this is hip 3 let's hit it ccs connect and swipe and payment oh boy there's no google pay option in the app either second demerit i have to manually enter in my credit card information what is this Connect the cable now, okay. God forbid you put a credit card reader on these things and make it easy. Okay, 200 amp cable means that I should be getting about 80 kilowatts, but I'm getting 50. Well, that's not good. It doesn't seem to be an amperage limitation. Maybe the charger's configured wrong. Okay, that's nowhere near the 150 kilowatts advertised. Let's try the charger next to it. Oh, I gotta enter in my credit card information again. Oh, I hate this. All right. 
attempt two. Hopefully I get more than 50 kilowatts. That's more like it. We're pegged at 200 amps and getting 79 kilowatts. That's just barely over half of the advertised speed of 150 kilowatts, but again, they put the wrong cable on the unit, so that's as good as I'm gonna get here. At the very least, it does work. I am charging right now. I can get to where I need to go. We have arrived at the first stop in the Tesla in Cape Girardeau. It's an eight stall version three supercharger at a gas station. What a nice location and what a novel idea. Version three superchargers are capable of 250 kilowatts of output. Technically, these are also amperage limited. It says right on the dispenser that the max is 350 amps. However, Tesla just ignores that. On the appropriate car, these dispensers can output close to 700 amps. Rather than relying on a hard amp limit, Tesla just monitors the temperature of everything. Well, they all work, so let's pick one. I'm gonna go in the middle, 1D. Wish I hadn't rented this on a day. It's gonna be pouring rain all day. I'm at 9%. All right. You shall join me in real time. Dupe. Plug in. Blue. 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 We are charging. Payment for Tesla superchargers is done through the car with your Tesla account. Next year, when all these non-Teslas are able to use superchargers, they don't expect the payment process to be this easy. If I'm honest, we'll probably have to use the Tesla app and activate them before plugging in. It'd be really nice if Tesla added payment kiosk at their superchargers, but I don't see that happening. Will I be able to get to the full 170 kilowatts? Ramping, we're at 80, 90, and there we have it. We're charging at 170 kilowatts. Right off the bat, how nice. All right, the next stop is just north of Cape Girardeau, and it says I'm gonna arrive with 12% state of charge, only 20 minutes away. This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance management platform. It connects to your bank account and gives you power over your personal finances. Rocket Money can look at all your monthly subscriptions, show them to you, and even cancel them from within the app. Need a bill lowered? Rocket Money can do that too. Just take a picture of your phone, internet, utility, or whatever bill, upload it to the app, and Rocket Money can negotiate and lower your bill for you. You can also use Rocket Money to set up budgets, monitor your credit score, get helpful tips on how to improve your credit score, and more. With Rocket Money, you too could throw fake money in the air. That doesn't make sense. It'll help you with your finances, though. To try Rocket Money for yourself, go to rocketmoney.com slash agingwheels or visit the link in the description below this video. And thanks again to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. It's uh, hard to see. Here's the next stop. It's on the other side of the parking lot from the supercharger. Adding insult to injury, it calls itself Super Space Charger. And just like the last stop, these cables are limited to 200 amps and there's no credit card reader on it, so you have to activate it with an app. This charger is on the EV Connect network, so I've downloaded the EV Connect app, and thankfully there is a use as guest mode, so I'm gonna hit that. There's a QR code, and, yep, scan that. Scanned rather quickly. It says it's 120 kilowatts, which we both know is a lie. I'll get 80 kilowatts out of this, if I'm lucky. Connector one and two. These are not labeled. I guess I'll guess, uh, connector one. Begin charge. How do I pay for this? I could enter a credit card, but thankfully this one has a Google Pay and a PayPal option, so I don't have to manually enter in a credit card number. All right, I heard a ka-chunk in the charger. Let's go ahead and plug in. Is it gonna work? It says to plug in. Okay, did I hit the wrong connector? Okay, let's try the other one. Maybe this one is connector one. Oh, that is. This is a thick cable, holy crap. Well, the app went back to the previous screen. Is it doing anything? It's charging! Well, that was painful. Are we at least getting the full 200 and... No, no, we're not. It's at 60 kilowatts. Is this charger configured wrong as well? because that doesn't seem like an amperage limitation. It's just sitting at 60 kilowatts. Whatever, there's another charger just down the road. We'll unplug and try that one. Just down the street is an identical unit at the same chain of gas stations. At least it's at a gas station and just down the road. The cable management on this one appears to be broken, but that's okay. Still unlabeled, I don't know which one is connector one, but learning from the last one, I'm gonna assume this is connector one. We're gonna go ahead and activate it and see if we get more than 60 kilowatts out of it. This handshake process is unbelievably long. There we go, it's charging. Okay, 
it's going. Oh my God, that's not 60 kilowatts. This one's pulling 30. What is, what the hell? All right, so do I go up the road back to the last one that was doing 60 kilowatts? Cause that's twice as fast as this one. I'll be stuck here forever at 30. Okay, I've been here about 15 minutes. It says I'll arrive to the next supercharger with 9%. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. In about 15 minutes, we made it from 9% to 60%. It was still pulling 100 kilowatts by the time I unplugged. Oh, okay, we're charging back at 60 kilowatts, which sucks, but it's better than 30. Time to go. If you're wondering why I'm so obsessed with charging speed, this is a pretty good example, because at a properly high powered charger, this car should be able to do 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes, which is actually a lot slower than some of its competition. I was here at 60 kilowatts, for 22 minutes, and I went from 12% to 41%. That's pathetic. Anyway, while I'm still in Cape Girardeau, I'm gonna take you to a broken charger so we can see the even more charger badness. Here it is. Now these are charge point units, just like the last one. There's no credit card reader. The cables are limited to 200 amps, but these will actually do 80 kilowatts normally. We're charging. Like I said, 200 amp limit, I should get 80 kilowatts out of this. What am I actually getting? Two, two kilowatts. These are broken. It would take me an hour to get 1% state of charge out of these units. Anyway, let's unplug and go on to the next stop. Cape Girardeau has a lovely bridge. Terrible chargers, but a lovely bridge. You know, this bridge, while still pretty, is much less majestic on a rainy day. The next stop is in Paducah, Kentucky at the first Electrify America station of the trip. Compared to the sea of paltry garbage that we've been experiencing, Electrify America is practically paradise. The typical setup at an EA station is four chargers. You have two 150 kilowatts and two 350 kilowatt chargers. That's how the one in Paducah is set up. And they have properly specced cables on these chargers. They can actually output those advertised numbers to the cars that can accept that much power. In addition to that, they have credit card readers on them. What a novel concept. I typically activate them with the app, but you do have the option to pay for them like a normal thing. In the Tesla, I'll be driving straight through Paducah. There's no superchargers there for me. I could stop at the Electrify America if I had a CCS adapter, but I don't, and that's not the point of this trip. Instead, I'll be stopping at nearby Katawa, or Katawa. Cut a Washington, whatever. There's a supercharger there. It's a version two, which means 150 kilowatts. And it says I'll arrive with 12% estimated. How's this for an intimidating bridge? To be fair, it was built in 1913. It's just, it's really narrow. Can confirm the bridge is just as narrow in the Tesla. Although it's a bit more wet. We made it to Paducah. Charger's over there. I only arrived with 12%. I can't get this 10% target thing down. Anyway, I wanted to stop and look at the app According to the app, Charger 1 is in use, which, yes, there's a Volvo charging there. Charger 2 is not available. Charger 3 is available, but the app says it's at 50 kilowatts, which is code for it's derated, and number 4 says it's at 150 kilowatts. So we're going to plug into number 4. Like I said, these have credit card readers on them, but I get free charging, so I'm going to activate it here, and then get out and plug in, and I'll report to back to you, report to back to you what charge I'm... Well, if I was paying attention, I would have noticed that error immediately. So let's try that again. Still says initiate. Oh, it's going. Good. Let's watch it ramp up. I should get, I'm at 12%, I should get 150 kilowatts from this 150 kilowatt charger. I have low hopes. Guess what? 78 kilowatts. This charger is limited to 200 amps as well. Great. Well, that one works, so I'm gonna plug into that. In the app, it said 50 kilowatts is what this charger puts out. It's in free mode. So already the one that was listed as derated in the app is faster than the one that was listed as full power. It's only 92 kilowatts, 230 amps, which is not at all what I should be getting, but it's free.
Different cars will be affected by a derated session like this in different ways. For example, my Polestar can hold its 150 kilowatt peak till about 30% and then it relatively linearly tapers off after that. So starting out at 90 kilowatts, assuming I'm going to 80%, will extend my charging session time by about 10 minutes. Another example is an Audi e-tron. It also has a peak charging speed of about 150 kilowatts, but it holds 150 all the way to 80%. So if an e-tron pulled up to this charger and got 90 kilowatts, its charging time would almost be doubled. Okay, uh, I just checked on the Volvo's charger screen and he's only getting 84 kilowatts at 50 something percent. It says he's been here for 20 something minutes. These two cars have the same battery pack and the same charging curve. So that charger's derated too, which means of the four chargers here, that one's broken, that one's derated, that one's derated, and that one's derated. None of them work properly. As far as location goes, this one's on the outskirts of a Walmart parking lot, which could be worse, I guess. This looks a little worse for wear, but I think this one might work. The one over here definitely doesn't. The screen is completely dead. So I don't know if these credit card readers even work. Not that it matters because this one and this one are in complimentary mode. I'm happy to be leaving that station. It's in complete shambles. Nothing works properly. The next stop is also in Electrify America in Clarksville, Tennessee. I've got the nav set. It says I'll arrive with 7%. I'm gonna go get food first because I'm hungry. Well, I said Kadawa was nearby, but I'm in Paducah now and I've still got 32 miles to go before I reach the supercharger. So it's not super close. We are in Kadawa. This is a version two 150 kilowatt supercharger. It's worth noting that the NAX compatible cars will not be able to charge at this supercharger. The NAX compatibility is for version three and up. So this is and will remain for only Teslas. Hey, you know that uh, Francis Energy station I was complaining about that they put it next to a hotel? Well, here's a Tesla supercharger at the back of a hotel. Not the best place. The thing you need to know about version two superchargers is that they share power. So I just need to not park next to that guy and I should get the full 150 kilowatts. Unplug, you can tell it's a version two because of the silver collar and the thicker cable here. Could have parked closer. And, come on. Come on. Car locked. Green. I should get 150 kilowatts. Will I? There's 113, 124, 147. That's close enough to 150 kilowatts. We've made it to Clarksville, Tennessee, and it looks like the second Electrify America is also at the edge of a Walmart parking lot. Again, I guess it could be worse. Okay, according to the Electrify America app, chargers number two and three are in use. And of course the Bolt is taking the good 350 kilowatt charger because they don't know any better. So I guess I'll take number four at 150 kilowatts. Oh, this one's in complimentary mode. Turns out every Electrify America I stopped it on that day was in complimentary session mode. The only one that was listed as derated in the app is that one right there. This one is in complimentary mode, but it's a should be able to give me the one full 150 kilowatts. I almost guarantee it won't. Oh, okay, well, it looks like 86 kilowatts is where it's gonna stop. The bolt's gone, I can take the 350. Let's unplug from here. Welcome to the Electrify America Charger Shuffle. Remember this one is the 350 kilowatt unit. It is not listed in the app as derated. This one is also in complimentary mode. Yay for me. How was Electrify America making money? A miracle has happened. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of performance that I should get at every one of them. 150 kilowatts. See, I wasn't lying. So second attempt at the second Electrify America, I finally find a full power charging station. Oh, I don't have to be here very long. Next stop, Nashville. All right, just eight minutes of charging later and we're ready to go. That station is also in shambles, but at least I got full power from one of the sites, so that's good. I am now driving past Clarksville, Tennessee. I'm not stopping here because there's no supercharger. In fact, there's no supercharger for 50 miles in either direction. That Electrify America is the only high power charging station for about 50 miles in either direction. I'm in North Nashville now, quite far off the beaten path. I think I'm like three miles off of the interstate that I was traveling on. 
and I'm going to an EVgo. This site, from memory, has a 350 and two 100 kilowatt units, and all three of those have two cords that can charge cars simultaneously. Oh, there's a Polestar! It's a Polestar, friend! Hello! Oh, good. I can pull up next to the Mach-E and charge on the 350 kilowatt charger. This will be shared power, so I don't expect to get the full 150 kilowatts, but I... I don't know, we'll see what I get. I'm gonna use the credit card this time. I'm not gonna activate it with a stinking app. I think I tried five different times to get my credit card to work and it just wouldn't. It said authorization failed and then the next card I tried, it just didn't show anything. I activated it with the ChargePoint app, so I'm glad I have that. Now, generally I like EVgo, but their handshake times are insanely long. Ah! All right, looks like since I'm sharing power with the car next to me, it's gonna stop at 200 amps. How familiar is that? I'm gonna charge up a little bit here and then we're gonna to go to the Electrify America in Nashville. Update from the Model 3 in Nashville. It is raining during rush hour. I'm stuck in traffic and I'm bored, but at least there's some aluminum next to me. In Nashville, there are a few superchargers to choose from. I didn't want to just stop at one, so this one is deviation from my path, about eh, a couple miles off of it. It is right off the interstate, but not the no interstate that we were driving on. Avenue. You're rude. This one is a version three with 12 stalls to choose from, and it's in a parking garage. Whatever. Oh, it's at the back of a hotel. Stop putting rapid chargers in hotels. Ah, there they are. Why would you, Mercedes EQS, you are just parked there blocking a supercharger. I'm gonna park next to this jerk EQS. This is one C of 12 to choose from. Charging. Guess what? 170 kilowatts. We are now leaving the EVgo. I needed to charge there for like two minutes to get to the Electrify America, which is only 11 miles away, but it's going to take me 30 minutes to get there because I arrived during rush hour in Nashville. So, yay. Nashville seems a little tragically underserved in terms of EV chargers because this one's out in the out here in the middle of nowhere and uh, it's kind of full. So. And the station is, oh, there, in the corner of the parking lot. Well, they really shoved it out of view, didn't they? Oh, it, oh no, it looks full. Okay, there are eight stalls back there. It does not look completely full, so let's see what the app says. Full, okay. All chargers in use. It says that eight, two, and three are all broken. So if those worked, there would be three, three chargers available. You know what? While we're waiting, let's go look at the Tesla supercharger, which is on the other side of the parking lot. Well, the first thing I see is that those Tesla chargers are empty. And there's far more than eight there. How many are there? Like 20 of them? Good God. It just keeps going. I have an exciting development. We've encountered the first supercharger of the trip with an out of order stall. Number 2C doesn't work. Good thing I have 23 other stalls to choose from. Again, if these three broken chargers worked, this station wouldn't be full. Should I be this weirdo over here in the corner? Should I pull through one of these spots? Maybe one over here. So many options. It's almost like Tesla anticipated the demand that they would have. We have an update. I was just researching whether or not I could make it to the other Electrify America and the lady in the bolt is unplugging right now. Will I get there first or will it be the ID4? We shall see. It's a race. Let's do one of these. Nope. Nope. These are where the uh, introverts park. Let's go. But there's just too many options. Frankly, I've spoiled for choice. Okay. They're not going for it. I'm going for it. That one over there is completely off. I plugged in. It's in complimentary session mode. Uh, let's, let's just wait for it to start charging. Guess what? We're only getting 83 kilowatts. I don't know what the limit is on this one because it's not stuck at 200 amps. It's at 209. So, well, I can't try a different charger. They're all being used. Thank you, Electrify America. I should be getting 150 kilowatts, but instead I'm going to be stuck here twice as long. And three of the chargers don't work. Look at that. 170 kilowatts. It's almost like Tesla superchargers 
or reliable. All right, I have 45%, which is enough to make it to the next stop. Let's go! This station sucks! The next stop is also in Electrify America, so we'll see what sort of grab bag we get there. To think, at the Electrify America across the parking lot, I waited for like 15 minutes to finally get a stall and it was derated. And there's only eight of them compared to 24 on this side of the parking lot. Next year, when my Polestar and all the other Nax cars can use this side of the parking lot, it will be a good time. Just having a look here, and the superchargers become a lot more frequent after this point. Between here and Chattanooga, there was one Electrify America, but there's four superchargers. Smyrna, Manchester, two other towns, and then like three in Chattanooga? I got a lot of stops to go. While I'm stuck here in evening rush hour Nashville traffic, let's recap. I've been to three Electrify America stations. I've charged on five of their chargers, and of those five, I've had one full power charging session. One out of five. It hasn't always been like this. Early last year, I went on a road trip from Chicago to Orlando with Alec from Technology Connections and his Ionic 5, and that trip went so well, it was boring. We only encountered one derated charger on that entire trip. And I've taken many similarly trouble-free road trips in my Polestar. By the way, we're stuck in Nashville traffic again. By the way, this is my first ever Tesla road trip. Never done this before. And already I trust the superchargers completely. Smyrna, Tennessee, or Smyrna, however you say it. This one was a mile off the interstate, which is annoying, but it's at a gas station with a Duncan. So that makes up for everything. Version three, 12 stalls, only two cars charging here. This is getting boring. Gee, I wonder if we'll get full power. It's already charging. Hey, would you look at that? 170 kilowatts. Gee, I'm surprised. I don't think I'm going to find a derated session on this entire trip in this Tesla. All right, I've made it to Manchester, Tennessee, and this has got to be the worst location yet. First of all, it's almost two miles off the interstate, and it's behind a Dollar General. Terrible location. I think they must have sneezed at a map to pick this one. All right, let's look at the app. Two of four available. There's only one car charging over there, so... Yeah, number one is unavailable... It says two, three, and four are 350 kilowatts. That is not correct. Now I knew beforehand that the app is not reliable and it doesn't always display correct information, but that's a new one. It says one of these is a 350 kilowatt when in reality it's a 150 kilowatt. But anyway, uh, three and four it says are available and at full power, so let's uh, plug in. All right, let's pull up to number four, which is actually a 350 kilowatt. That older couple there in the EV6 is charging to 100%. And I'm happy to report that. I'm being optimistic it hasn't even started yet. I bet, you know what, I'm feeling good about this. I think I'm going to get full power out of this session. This is not ramping fast. We're at 28 kilowatts so far. I'm getting 58 kilowatts this time. <laughs> this sucks. Well, screw this charger. We're trying the next one over there. Let's try this one. Well, we're not getting full power out of this one either. We're stuck at 68, no, 69 kilowatts, 172 amps. Who knows what the problem with this charger is? The couple in the EV6 is leaving. So I'm going to try charger number three at this location. This is so terrible. Let's plug it in and hope for the best. Not quite full power. We're at 120 kilowatts, but you know what? This is the third dispenser I've tried at this station, so I'm just going to live with it. 120 kilowatts is good enough. Still not what I should be getting, especially at 24% state of charge, but... And we are out of here. I charged up only to 50% because that's all I need to make it to my next and final destination of the trip, the Electrify America in Chattanooga, Tennessee. In Manchester, Tennessee, the Tesla supercharger is not behind a Dollar General. It's behind a Dunkin' Donuts! I like this one. It is a 10 stall version two. Again, Nax cars will not be able to charge at version two, so this one will remain Tesla only. I just need to pick which one I want. There's so many options. Oh, oh, we're not getting full speed this time. We're getting 136 kilowatts. <gasps> 
I'm going to unplug and see if a different one will get a different result. Yep, looks like 132 is all this station wants to give me. I'm at a different stall num number, which means a different charger cabinet. So I guess we're just getting 132 kilowatts out of this one. Guys, I found my first derated Tesla supercharger. This is, this is monumental. From this point on, the superchargers became frequent and uneventful. Monteagle, Tennessee. This is a 12 stall supercharger version three they're all pull through that's interesting this is kind of at the top of the mountain look at that 170 kilowatts kimball tennessee 12 stall version three supercharger kind of on the edge of a parking lot next to a cracker barrel and a taco bell 170 kilowatts last stop in the tesla I just picked a random supercharger in Chattanooga. This one is a version three with 12 stalls and it's at a mall like it's 2005. That's two kilowatts off. Nope, never mind. That's, that's, uh, that's 170. We've arrived at our destination, one of the Electrify America stations in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This one is beautiful. There are six chargers. All of them are brand new, all of them have solar canopies, and all of them are 350 kilowatts. Yeah, this isn't quite the slam dunk I thought it was going to be. If you're not familiar, and this is an oversimplification, Electrify America was founded by Volkswagen essentially as a punishment for their Dieselgate scandal. It is an independent company, but Volkswagen provides a large amount of their funding. That perfect Electrify America is at the Volkswagen factory in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they built, among other things, the ID4. The idea was to end the trip at this beautiful, perfect Electrify America, get a perfect charging session right away and say, of course I get full power here. Of course this Electrify America works perfectly, but that's not what happened. Oh dear, this is embarrassing. I thought for sure we would get a full power charge session here, but uh, look at this. We're getting 107 kilowatts net at the Volkswagen factory. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm gonna try a different charger. It didn't make a difference. I tried two other chargers, three in total, and the highest I saw was 113 kilowatts. I'm only getting 113 kilowatts. I should be getting 150, and I'm not the best Electrify America. Why? I was so sure that I would get full power at this perfect Electrify America that I started doubting the car at this point. As a sanity check, after I got back, I went to a nearby 350 kilowatt EV Go to see if my car could still accept 150 kilowatts. And I went there without using on-route battery preconditioning. And when I got there, the parking lot was under construction and I couldn't get to them. So I went to a different one, I plugged in at 9% with no preconditioning and got 155 kilowatts all the way to 30%. So yeah, it does look like it was the fault of the chargers there. Not that it matters really. One good charge at the end wouldn't make up for this series of bad charging experience I had for the entire rest of the trip. Is this what the chargers are like everywhere? No, probably not. This is one region on one day. However, I'd argue that they shouldn't be like this anywhere. The route for this trip was inspired by a recent trip I took down to Florida. The first leg of that trip was the route that I just showed you, and I was shocked at how poorly it went. I didn't get a single good charging session until I went 10 miles out of my way to go to the Electrify America at the Volkswagen plant. And yes, when I was there before, I did get the full 150 kilowatts. I don't know what happened this time. The charging stops on that trip did get better as I made my way down through Georgia and Florida, and some of them were even downright perfect, but that did not make up for the entire first day of bad charging experiences. If I was a normal person and not an EV nerd, I would have sold my Polestar after that trip. Again, the vast majority of EV charging is done at home, and some people never even use rapid chargers, but the ability to go on trips easily is still a very important part of the whole well-rounded car experience. Anyway, that's why access to superchargers is such a big deal. Currently, Electrify America is the only other charging network out there with highway planning, and they're unreliable. And most everything else is poorly set up, confusing, unreliable, or just not a good experience. Now that's not to say the supercharger experience will be perfect with all these non-Teslas using them. There's two big issues of note. They were designed with Teslas in mind, which all have a charge point in the rear left. So with a charge point in any other place on the car, the cable's too short and the charger's in the wrong place. And I think more importantly, superchargers can only output 500 volts. So 800 volt cars to charge at these superchargers have to use an onboard booster to boost that DC voltage to something they can use, which dramatically limits the power. 
As an example, a Lucid Air can only onboard about 50 kilowatts from one of these superchargers using its onboard booster. Both of these issues are solved by version 4 superchargers, which have longer cables and 1000 volt capability, but those are only just starting to roll out. Regardless, access to superchargers is still a huge deal, especially to someone like me who travels in their EV a lot. If you want to see me do this same trip in my Polestar next year when I have access to V3 superchargers, let me know in the comments below. In addition to supercharger access, the North American EV industry is moving to a much easier to use, less bulky connector, which is a good thing, even though a big transition like that this late in the game is going to be really confusing to a lot of people for a long time. And to the inevitable, I could fill up my gas car in five minutes, or I could drive 500 miles without refilling in my blah, blah, blah. Good for you. Just keep on doing that, nothing's stopping you. And thanks for watching.